numbers, um, and so on. Um, do realize that, you know, when you do this, um, take um, what people say and pay attention to it. It doesn't mean that you have to make any changes, though, all right? You may have good reasons for doing it the way that you've, you've done it, and take their input, listen to it, see if it makes sense, and go on. And don't, um, don't feel bothered or offended if someone gives you negative feedback, all right? Uh, a good friend of mine um, said something about getting criticism. Um, she's a musician, so she was talking about music. And she says that even if someone criticizes you, they've taken the time to give you something. You know, their advice, their criticism is a gift. All right? You might not think it's a gift. It might not be a gift you want, right? But they've taken the time to give you something, to give you a gift. So you should at least think about what they've said. That doesn't mean that you immediately drop everything and change what they've said because of one person's feedback. But listen to it and see, does it make sense? The other thing that it's important to do, I think, is to, um, if you show your site to a couple different people, see if several people say about the same thing, right? If one person gives feedback, that might just be their personal preference or whatever. But if two or three people say sort of the same thing, like, gee, these color, this color combination is hard to read, well, maybe that's something to, to give a little more weight to. So I'm all for showing it to people and getting feedback. And, and for those of you that are here on campus, we can do that on Wednesday in lab. You can get preliminary feedback from me. You can get some feedback from the other folks in your class. And for those of you that are online, you can send it to me. You can actually post to the discussion forum if you want, maybe a screenshot or, because um, you know, I don't think you want to upload all your all your files to it, but you could take a screenshot of your page and post it. Um, that actually would be a good idea for everyone to post a screenshot of their home page just so that people can see what other people are doing and offer you feedback. Anyhow, onward and upward. Uh, for the people that are online, Wednesday's lecture last week did not record, so I posted the comparable lecture from another semester. So the example might be slightly different, but the material is the same of what I covered in class um, last Wednesday. And we're going to expand on that example um, today. Um, the example that we had last time, in the example we had last time, we had a section of the page that we showed or hid based on whether the user had clicked a, a link or not, or clicked a, uh, a button or not. And this is not loading, so this is, oh, here we go. This is as slow as a proverbial molasses in winter time. I am just going to go and create, recreate the example rather than waiting for this. All right, we had We had something like this.
where we had our HTML tags and a form. You actually could probably get by without having a form. Um, I think you might get validation issues, but you're not really going to be using the form. Then we add something like um, what is the capital of, I don't remember what we did, capitals of Canada. See, my memory is slowly coming back. So that was our basic content, all right? All the content, all the HTML and everything is going to go um, in this file, even the stuff that we don't see originally. We're then going to use style sheets, CSS code, to hide the stuff that we do not want visible initially. So I can go in and say, things that have an ID of Canada Capital, we are not going to display. That's what display none means. We then can add a button notice that it's not going to be a submit button because we're not going to send this to the server to do this. This is all going to happen on the client side. It's all going to happen within the browser. So we don't have a submit button. We instead have a, just a plain old button with an on-click method that says document get element by ID then we have Canada capital style display equals inline. All right. Let's, let's analyze this statement. All right. This is the interactive part of this. All right. By interactive, I mean that the user does something to the page and the page responds somehow. So in this case, we have on the button an on-click event. The events start off with on, the word on, so on something. On click, on mouse over, on mouse out, and so on. We then have an equal sign, and then we have double quotes. Remember, every attribute of HTML is enclosed in double quotes. So like we have type equals button, value equals show answer, here we have our JavaScript statement here between the quotes. Now our JavaScript statement consists of two sort of parts. One is it uses what's called the document object model to point to something specific on the page. Think again if we had a list of 20 different countries and their, their capitals. We would want to say which capital we want to show when we press the button. So document.getElementById, Canada Capital, points to that specific thing on the page that we want to change. We use the ID to point to things, right? ID identification means, you know, it uniquely identifies um, a particular piece of code. In this case, it identifies the span. So we're pointing at that span, and what are we going to change about it? We're going to change the style. 
What about the style we're going to change? We're going to display, change the display type. And we're going to change it to equal inline. So we've gone from a display of none to a display of inline. All right. The capitalization is important. So document, get element by ID, style, display, that all needs to be capitalized in a certain way. All right. Generally speaking, functions or methods sometimes, or actions that are in the document object model, use what's called camel case. All right. You know how camel has humps, goes up and down. All right. The first word is usually lowercase, then the first letter of each following word is uppercase. So you can sort of tell where it says get element by ID that the G, because it's the first word of the function name, is lowercase, the E is uppercase, the B is uppercase, and the I is uppercase. And the rest is going to be lowercase. Document is only one word, so we just have the word document. Enclosed in quotes are sort of the, the values of things. All right? You do not put things in quotes if it is a built-in function or if it's a variable. We haven't talked about variables yet, but those of you that have done other programming, uh, we can use variables in JavaScript just like you, we did in, uh, you do in other programming languages. So the stuff that is included in quotes are not variables and not function names. It's values of things. So what is the value of the ID that we want? Well, it's literally the words Canada Capital. So this matches this exactly. And it's included in quotes. It's something that I made up. It's not built into the language. And then finally, what are we changing the value of the display to? That value isn't contained in a variable or something. It is the word inline. So those things are called literals. Notice again that the literals are enclosed within quotes as well, but they're enclosed within single quotes. Again, remember that double quotes surround the entire JavaScript expression. The single quotes are used wherever you need to use quotes within the expression. So the double quotes go around the whole thing. The single quotes are used when you need to put quotes around something in the middle of the statement. So if we go and save this, Again, notice we get a warning. Internet Explorer cares about your security. So it kind of thought it was odd that we were running JavaScript on this page. So it's just asking me, gee, do I want to run JavaScript? And yes, I do. All right. There's obviously some sort of problem here. Let's go and look at it. Oh, I forgot to end my. button tag. There we go. All right. So now we have show answer and we click that and it shows us the answer. How could we make a button to hide it? Well, we could do the same thing have a button that says hide answer and set the value of the visibility or the display back to none. So we can show answer and hide answer. Go back and forth. How could we make it so that when we click the show button, the show button disappears? 
All right? In other words, there's no sense showing the show button and the hide button at the same time. All right? Because you can only, it's, if it's shown, you can hide it. If it's hidden, you can show it. So we can make those buttons disappear too, just like the text. How can we do that? Well, we could do that in, an, in a bunch of ways. We can make an ID of Hide Canada. and show Canada. So my CSS is going to contain how I want the page to initially display. Initially I want the show, the, the show Canada button to be visible, so I make the display inline. I want the hide to be invisible, so I make the display none. So I can go put an ID on these two. And I can actually just cut and paste. When I click on the show button, I want to show the answer. I want to show the hide button. And I want to hide the show button. And when I click the hide button, I want to hide the hide button and show the show button. So now when I start out, only the show button's visible. Right? It doesn't make sense to have a hide button. It's already hidden, the answer. So I would not want to have a hide button and confuse users to hide what. All right? When I click the show button, what's going to happen? It's going to show the answer. It's going to hide the show button. It's going to show the hide button. All right? And then when I click the hide answer, it's going to hide the answer hide the hide button and show the show button. All right, so we can go back and forth. <coughs> now, one thing that you might notice is that this gets to be kind of confusing. All right. What happens if we try to put these on another line? That helps a little bit with the readability of it because everything is no longer on one line going across. But to have a bunch of JavaScript in the middle of your code is kind of ugly. All right? It makes your code hard to read. The one thing that we could do is we could make it so that we take these instructions and put them somewhere else. All right? And I can do that via what's called a function. A function in JavaScript is like a function in other programming languages. It's where we take a set of statements and give them a name. So we can just say, I want to show the Canadian answer, and then that function has all the statements necessary to show Canada's capital. 
So I'm going to define my functions in the head section, just like I define the style. I'm going to give that a name. And I can put in that function all the statements that I need to do whenever I want to show the Canadian answer. Then I can make a function for Hyde Canada as well. And then I can put in all the instructions that I want to do when I want to hide Canada. Now. Now this group of instructions has a name, Show Canada. And this one has a name, Hide Canada. So when I do an on click, I don't have to write all those instructions out. I can simply give the name of the function. For now, we're going to ignore the parentheses. All right? But when you declare a function, you have things called arguments that you can pass into the function. But for right now, we're going to ignore those as part of the function name. All right. Ah, I got an error. All right, let's go and look. Remember how you debug an error? You click that. If you're running Internet Explorer, you double click that. Show details. Object does not support this property or method. Okay, that's not a terribly descriptive message. Let's view this in another browser. Oh, I know what the problem is. I gave my function name the exact same name as the IDs of the answer. So that confused it. So I'm going to change my function name to show Canada answer, hide Canada answer. If you look at this, that does the exact same thing it did before, but the advantage of putting it in a function is that we can go in and we can streamline our code so that within the HTML, we don't have to have a mess of JavaScript. We can keep those things nice and separate. It's almost like separating our CSS from our HTML, right? If you separate it, it makes it easier to read, easier to maintain. Now, we can do variations of this, all right? I'm going to go and save this, and I'm going to start a new example where we are going to have some menus.
So I'm going to create an unordered list of some options. We're going to try to do a rudimentary version of this. Put my mouse over that, it shows up. Put my mouse over that, shows up. And so on down the line. We're going to try to do a rudimentary version of that. All right? So, first thing I want to do is I want to create the main menu. And the main menu goes, goes horizontally across the top of the page. This should probably be in a nav section because this is the site's navigation. So I will put this within a nav section. And I'll go and make a couple of other options underneath it. Now one thing I would suggest doing um, with web development or any kind of programming is do a little piece at a time. Don't try to do everything all at once. So for example, I want to get this going where I want to get this going where I'm duplicating this function as much as possible. So the, oh. so the first thing we're going to do is try to get a list of links going across the top of the page. So I can go and do that by saying, We have that. Those are our links. Now, I can go in and put space between them by doing something like margin dash right 20 pixels. All right, so that gives us some space there. Now let's make it so that we get a menu underneath this whenever we put our mouse over. All right. Now, we're going to do this in a very similar way. I'm going to put inside of this UL, I'm going to put a submenu for the different teams in the NFL. I'm using an href of pound sign simply because I don't have actual pages to link to. All right, you'd put the actual URL of the page that you were using, um, but again, I'm just doing that, in, you know, because this is an example.
All right. So now the way I have this set up is I have the HTML showing what everything is shown. Actually, I'm going to do this. Go rearrange this a little bit and put this underneath here. Then I'll make one for the MBA. All right. So this is the HTML, but there's no styling involved. So I see the main menu, then I see the two submenus. And if I had one for HTML, it would be underneath that and so on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do almost exactly the same thing that we did with the show and hide answer. All right? Except we're going to do it with these menus. All right? So, what I can do is this. I can go and I can set all the menus initially to be invisible. So how do I do that? I'm going to give each one of these an ID, an ID of this one for NFL menu. I'll give an ID of this one for NBA menu. Then I'm going to go in my style and I'm going to make both of those invisible to start. So pound sign NFL menu. Display none. So we look at this now. All right, neither of them appear. All right, so we're sort of following the same evolution that we did with the quiz and showing and hiding the answers. Now we want to do almost the same thing, right? I want to show the menu, but I don't have a button to click on. I have a link. And therefore, I don't want to do it when I click the link, because clicking the link will take me to another page, but I simply want to do it when my mouse is over that link. So what I could do is go in here and say, on mouse over equals and what's the statement going to look like well Oh, I think I overwrote. Yes, I did. I overwrote the first example. Darn. So I'll retype that. Document. Document means we're going to change something on this page. Get element. by ID means that we're going to point to the thing that we want to change using its ID. And what's the ID? Well, we want to show NFL menu. What do we want to change about it? We want to change the style. What about the style? We want to change the display of the style. And what do we want to set the display of the style to? 
in line. So, put our mouse on it, it appears. All right. So what's the difference between this? Well, we follow the same formula we did before, right? We have a user event. The difference being, in this case, the user event was putting the mouse over it and not clicking on a button. All right. We point to the element using the document object model. Document dot get element by get element by ID, the name of the ID, and then we change a particular property. We change the dot style property the display property of the style and we change it to inline. Now, we want it to go away when we take our mouse out of it. All right, how do we do that? How do we make it disappear? It's not going to be on click, right? It's not going to be on mouse over. It's going to be on mouse out. All right, a different event. We look here we do a Google search. It will show you a list of all the events that you can write code for. on before print, on after print, blah, 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 a whole bunch of them. The ones that we're most interested in is on click, on mouse over, on mouse out. But there's other ones that you can do too. So you can change things as you scroll, for example. The question you asked the other day, David, about doing some effect when you scroll, you'd probably put an on scroll event on it and, and do things accordingly. But there's a whole bunch of events that you could have. They all start with the word on and they all correspond to some user action that they're taking. So I can copy this and say, on mouse out display none if I put my mouse on I take it off on. Now, what if I added code for the MBA? Well, I could do a similar thing. Except, instead of saying that I want to show and hide the NFL menu, I show and hide the NBA menu. Put my 
mouse over that, that appears. Put my mouse over MBA, and that appears. Now, what if we were to add the NHL into the mix? I could create an NHL menu. I can make sure that that menu is hidden when I first display the page. Remember, what we're going to have in a style sheet is sort of the initial conditions of the page. In other words, what happens when the page first displays. All right. We are then going to um, change those attributes based on some of the user's actions. So if I go in here and make my change to the JavaScript of this event, I'm going to show oops, NHL menu and hide NHL menu. So we show it, show it, show it. All right. Now we could format that menu however we wanted to. All right. Right now it's also oriented horizontally. But if it made sense, we could actually have a, 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 a more defined structure in there. We could have two columns like they do in ESPN or multiple columns or whatever. Now, we do have a little problem here. All right. Namely, what if I go and try to click on the Cleveland Browns? Oops, disappears before we can get to it. Why is that? Notice what the code says. That link, on mouse over, we're displaying the NFL menu. On mouse out, we're hiding it. Well, let's make our link look a certain way. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, well let, let's take a look at that. Let's first understand what's going on. All right. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to put a background of the link. Give it a background of yellow. So there's my link. On mouse over, it appears. As soon as I leave the yellow portion, I've done an on mouse out. So notice that there's a gap between Cleveland Browns and NFL. All right. So if I try to go and click on Cleveland Browns, before I can move to it, the instant that I leave that, that other menu disappears. So, what's our solution? I want you to think about this, and if you want to even experiment with this be between now and Wednesday. Our solution is going to be a couple of things. First of all, we want the menu to appear for the Cleveland Browns if the mouse is over that part of the page as well. All right, so we want the menu to be showing if the mouse is over that section as well. Second thing is we want to make sure that there's no gap between the two links. The reason that it's not displaying is that there's a gap between those two. And in the instant that we leave the 
yellow section, the section of the link, the menu disappears. So we're going to make, as, as David said, we're going to put some um, sort of padding around it so that the two things are right on top of each other. Now, we don't want them literally right on top of each other, so we're going to get rid of all things and we're going to add in some padding. So that way, instead of the link looking like this, There's the link for the MBA, and here's the link for Cleveland, so that when you move your mouse from this zone here, you've done them on mouse out, so it makes this guy disappear. We're going to make it so the links look like this. so that there's no gap between the two. And, the, and as we move the mouse from here to here, we don't go through this sort of no man's land. And yet, other here, like this e either. So through a kind of padding and margins, we're going to make sure that this works the way that we want to. All right? So we're going to do this on Wednesday, and we'll cover a couple other um, examples. As far as your assignment uh, dealing with JavaScript, you don't have to do anything extensive. We're going to do some examples. We've done some examples already. We're going to do some similar examples um, next time. You just really need to take and adapt one of those examples um, to make it work for uh, within a page of your own. Do you have any questions at this point? All right, I appreciate your patience this morning. Um, we'll see you on Wednesday.